Hi, and welcome back. So uh, now we're uh, really ready to start doing our transcription. And uh, so now hopefully, uh, you know, I kind of am meaning this to be more of a method. So I, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to transcribe this exact solo with me as I do it. Uh, but, I'm, you know, to start off, I'm going to open up transcribe. So open up transcribe. And uh, the way I'm doing this, uh, I'm actually using this iShow UHD. This is the screen capture software I use to make these videos. So I'm actually, I, I use this to um, pretty much capture the, I, I recorded a screen capture video of myself watching the Cannonball Adderley video on YouTube and transcribe uh, happens to open up movie files. So it's great if you're ever doing, and I'll get into this more in the arranging and composition playlist, but if you're ever doing, you know, scoring or sound for film or something like that, Transcribe can really help you out with a lot of that stuff. But uh, anyway, kind of digress there. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is Transcribe. This is, uh, when I'm making this video, it's the current version. It's Transcribe 8. Um, and uh, there are a lot of cool things in this program, but to get started, I'm going to start off by opening the file. And I found out it's not labeled, but I know it's iShow UHD 113. So I'm going to open this. And it's actually going to open up the movie file along with this, but we don't need the movie file, so I'm going to close it. There we go. And one of the nice things I'm going to do, if you have a Macintosh, it's going to be command up arrow that I'm about to use right now. So I'm doing command up arrow. And what that's doing, as you can see, I'm zooming in on the waveform because it used to be this waveform was way too quiet for me to see anything. So I'm doing command up arrow. If you have a PC, I'm pretty sure it's control up arrow. Or uh, yeah, I think it's control up arrow. But again, I'm not, not completely sure. And uh, so now I can see the waveform pretty well. And uh, also another thing I'm going to do, Transcribe has this feature built into it where I can see, actually, you know what, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So I can see, this is kind of one of the things that a lot of people really like about Transcribe, and it is very helpful, but when you highlight some stuff in Transcribe, it gives you the harmonic content. So it gives you kind of the, uh, the spectrum analysis of what is going on at that point in time in the music. So if I were to just randomly play this right now, the most prevalent note in that is going to be this C. So, and we can, we can hear that in Transcribe right now. So, uh, Anyway, for what we're going to be doing, uh, this spectrum analysis is, uh, you know, it definitely is useful for, for certain things. But for what we're going to use this for, uh, we're not going to need it. So I'm actually going to tell it to not show our spectrum. And now I'm going to kind of collapse this down again. Or I'll, actually, no, I'm going to make this, still make this pretty big. So uh, anyway, um, what we're going to use Transcribe for, and the main cool thing about Transcribe, I think, and the main reason I think it, I think it's so awesome, uh, or the the big reason I, I like to use it, is because if you look up here under the markers menu, it lets you put in measure markers and beat markers over here, and it also put lets you put in section markers. And the cool thing, uh, notice these hotkeys. So the hotkey for measure is M. Hotkey for beat is just B. So uh, if I were to go through this, and I'll go through right now, I'm just going to hit B a bunch of times. And you can see it puts in these hash marks up here. So I can see against this waveform where the beats are. And right now these are just random, so it's not really telling you anything. But when we get into actually what I call stripping the sound file and, you know, actually putting the measure and beat numbers into the sound file, it'll really give you a good idea of, um, of uh, what we're going to be dealing with, of, you know, how, how this is really going to help out. So actually, let me get rid of these markers. Delete selected markers. Yes, it will. Okay, so now I'm going to get into this. One of the things I'm going to tell you about this sound file right off the bat, Cannonball counts it in, and he counts it in saying uh, he goes one, two, a three, a four. And the way he counts it in, he's actually counting in half time. So we're actually going to strip this sound file 
double what he counts in. So if he counts in one, two, three, four, and let me actually find that. Works one, two, three, four. So if he counts in like this, and I'm, I'm actually going to put in a beat marker right there. Okay, so if he's counting in like that, we're actually going to put a beat, we're actually going to put two beats into every place he, he says. So actually, I'll show you what that looks like right now. I'll put it in. Work One, two, three, so our beats and measures are going to be spaced about like this, about like what, I, what I've just put in. So uh, anyway, with that out of the way, I'm going to pretty much uh, strip this sound file with beat and measure markers and uh, and keep in mind all I'm doing is hit hitting M and this is another thing to look at when I hit M it's going to number the measures so that's what the measures are going to look like they're going to have numbers on them why why put this in and this is really important and you'll kind of see why uh, kind of further on down the road when we start really getting into do, working with Sibelius with this file. But the point of having these is so that you always, whenever you're working with the sound file, you're always going to know exactly where you are uh, when you're transcribing. And that is going to really be the key to saving you just enormous, unbelievable amounts of time when you're transcribing. So anyway, without uh, any more of that, I'm going to just start stripping this with a uh, measure and beat markers. And keep in mind, all I'm doing is hitting M and M for measure and B for beat. Okay? So here we go. One, two, Okay, so so that's it. We we've, we've su successfully stripped this sound file. So now we can work at any point of this sound file. If we're transcribing measure 35, we know exactly where measure 35 starts, where it ends, and we can now accurately say all the notes that are there in 35. And this is really what's going to help us out and what's going to save just tons and tons and tons of time when you're transcribing using this method. Uh, so anyway, and one other thing I want to show you, and I'm doing this by, I'm going to hit command, uh, on a Macintosh it's command uh, left arrow, on a PC it would be control left arrow, you can see what I'm doing, I'm zooming out the waveform right now, I'm zooming out, uh, I guess, uh, horizontally, the waveform, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the beats, so this is selecting all the, all the measure markers, all the beat beat markers and now check this out this is really cool too I'm going to go up to markers compute tempo what it's going to do is based on the time uh, that I've put in uh, based on the time uh, that I've selected and the number of markers that are there it's going to accurately compute the tempo uh, or the average tempo over these 65 measures so here we go and it's telling me that the average tempo, tempo over 257 markers is 198.2 beats per minute. And with that, I'm out of time. So hopefully you're finding this interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.